Hi, today we have another eBay mailbag video. Hopefully this is some miniature LED downlights, so let's have a look what's in the package. So what we have is eight of these miniature LED downlights. Uh, they've just got a warm white 1 watt LED in it and the centre section of the downlight is supposed to be adjustable so that you can direct it at the wall and what I want to do with these is just have them mounted in a row on the ceiling pointing down at the wall to illuminate the wallpaper that we've got in that room. Um, so they don't need to be very bright so 1 watt is more than adequate although we may see if we can change the LED anyway. So let's have a look what's inside the box. So we've got the downlight unit and a LED driver, we'll have a look at that. And then we've got some, um, some instructions. So the instruction leaflet that comes with the LEDs is fairly generic, uh, clearly. Um, it's got all of the models listed, long lifespan, instant start, solid state, 90% more efficient, uh, long working time, no RF interference, so that'll be interesting to see whether those LED drivers are any good. Uh, no mercury, um, working environment minus 20 to 40 degrees, low maintenance cost, LED driver included and easy to install. And we've got the 1 watt version, uh, so it implies it's the 100 to 240 volt version. Um, and the hole that we need to cut in the ceiling is 55 millimeters, and it's 68 millimeters across its widest dimension. And here we have the LED unit itself, so let's just take it out of its wrapping. So these downlights comprise of two parts. Uh, we've got the LED driver connected through a, uh, a little two-pin connector here, and then the downlight unit itself. Um, it's made from aluminium, but it feels really cheap. It's super flimsy and basically weighs nothing, uh, and it's just relying on um, this metal part that the LED is backed onto as heat sinking, but these are only one watt LEDs, so they're not going to get terribly hot anyway. And then we have the spring clips here. So the idea is you, you drill the hole in the ceiling um, and then you push them up through into the ceiling and the clips clip down um, onto the top of the plasterboard and hold these in place. So that's fairly standard for these kind of downlights. And then supposedly the, um, yeah, so the LED is um, adjustable, you can point it at an angle towards the the wall, so that's okay, that's not too bad. And then in the middle we have the um, LED itself, so it's got a fairly large collimator, uh, I'd estimate that's about 25 millimeters in diameter, and you can just see the die of the uh, one watt LED inside. So I probably will want to change the LEDs in these, although we'll give them a try with the LED that's fitted. Um, so first of all, I'll try just removing these screws on each side, which kind of provide the pivot for the LED module itself. So we've got on the side of the unit um, I don't know if that's legible with the lights in the room. Um, it says AC 86 to 265 volts, uh, CE marked ROHS, production date 2014 years. And for the LED unit itself, it looks like this back shell just unscrews from the front here. So that appears to undo quite easily. And then we have the LED at the back here, which um, has no thermal grease or anything like that, it's just pressed against the aluminium at the back by the lens in here. And the lens itself is actually quite a nice piece of plastic, it's quite a lot bigger than the normal kind of collimators that you see for power LEDs. Uh, there was no indication of what the beam angle is for these, so it'll be interesting to see when we power it up uh, what the beam looks like. Um, if it's too narrow, because I do want to create a wall wash effect with this, then I may just rough up the lens slightly to uh, diffuse the light slightly. And then we just have the aluminium collar which holds everything together. So let's power up the, um, the LED and have a look what it looks like. Okay, so I've connected this to a mains lead, so hopefully this won't blow up and take out the whole house. Uh, but let's turn it on and see if it illuminates. 
Yeah, and that seems to work quite well. So we can see on the power meter, uh, we're reading about 1.6 watts, and the power factor is only 0 0.34. So we'll just have a look at the scope at the waveform of the power that's being drawn from the mains. So you can see on the oscilloscope, uh, the time base is set to 20 milliseconds, so it's drawing pulses of current uh, at 50 hertz. So uh, we'll have a look inside the um, AC to DC converter in a moment, and we'll see what's inside, because that's um, explaining why the power factor is so poor in this case. So just as we did in the previous mailbag video, I've set the LED lamp one meter above the workbench, and... Um, we have the lux meter on the bench, so we'll turn off the lab lights and then we'll see how bright the LED actually is. So that's reading about 5 lux without the LED on. So you can see that's reading about 1100 uh, lux. Uh, the beam angle is very narrow, so um, with the LED 1 meter away from the bench, that's about 30 centimeters at most, so um, that's not really going to be ideal for my purposes, so I'll have to uh, diffuse the, the lens slightly with some sandpaper. There's also, I'm not sure if it picks up on camera, but there's also a yellow ring, uh, which I expected from the uh, potentially quite cheap LED that's being used. So I'll probably end up switching the LEDs out um, and see if they perform better with some Luxian Rebels, if they'll attach to the um, the light and actually fix between the lens and the aluminium base plate. So we'll just have a look inside the LED driver. On the front of the device um, it says it's a constant current driver uh, which supports 86 to 265 volt input and the output current it says is 680 milliamps at 3 to 12 volts but um, that must be a misprint because um, even if you were supplying just 3 volts to the LED, you'd be supplying over 2 watts to it, and we weren't even reading that on the power meter, so I suspect they just kind of used a generic case, which kind of had sort of the correct um, information. So we'll see if we can crack the unit open. I'm not expecting much from this. Okay. And then just inside we have a very typical... Uh, kind of two transistor LED driver circuit. So this is the type, um, let me grab my stick. So this is the type, um, I can see here that there's basically no current feedback on the secondary side. So we have the transformer here, and then all we have on this side is the two, two uh, ends of the secondary uh, connected to the, um, there's a diode here, and then we've got the wire for the LED and then we've got a capacitor across the supply with a bleeder resistor across there for some reason. And so they're probably doing the current limiting uh, crudely on the primary side. Um, so there's four um, pins here, so there'll be um, a primary winding and then a feedback winding to drive these two um, transistors into a, a relaxation oscillator. Um, so it's kind of crude. Um, there's no fuse or anything on the board. Uh, not particularly um, something that you'd want to install uh, just on your lighting circuit or whatever in the house, uh, but I'm not planning on using this anyway. Uh, so that's just kind of a quick cursory look at, at uh, what's in the driver circuit, but there's nothing inherently dangerous other than the fact that it's not fused, and I suspect probably this part of the track would blow up if something was um, damaged um, or short-circuited on here anyway, so uh, yeah, it's probably not... Not too bad. Uh, the capacitor itself um, is rated 2.2 microfarads at 400 volts, um, and then I think they're just yeah they're just using a single diode to rectify the AC that's coming in. So, um, and then there's a, a one mega ohm bleeder resistor here across the uh, capacitor on the primary. So here we have the eBay listing for these downlights. Um, it's the 4 or 8 1 watt LED recessed ceiling light. Uh, they come in day white or warm white. You can buy them in a pack of 4 or 8, and they only come in the 1 watt version in this style. Um, and it was just £11.99, including uh, delivery, so free delivery. And the seller is 11 Superman 11. 
So although this is a Chinese seller, this actually shipped from the UK. So it only took two days to arrive, which is quite good. And then they've got their listing, which um, says uh, some of the specifications for the unit. So aluminium uh, shell. It says the cover's a frosted acrylic, but it's definitely not frosted, uh, which is why the beam angle is so small. Uh, one watt and then uh, warm white between 3000 and 3500 Kelvin. Well, it looks quite a bit warmer than that, so I, I wouldn't say it's uh, anywhere near 3,500 Kelvin. Or day white um, is, you know, the traditional 6,000 Kelvin. Lumens 90 to 100 lumens. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite that high. Um, and then we've got the beam angle, which is definitely nowhere near 180 degrees. Um, it was close to probably 30 degrees, so that's way off. Um, but they do sell all kinds of other lights. Um, and that was quite a good price for what I wanted to use it for. I'm going to likely hack the LED unit up quite heavily. I really just wanted the case and the lens. Um, so I was quite happy to pay £12 for eight of those. So that was a quick look at these miniature 1 watt LED downlights which I purchased from eBay. The bigger plan is probably to replace the LED in it with something like one of these Luxian Rebels that's been mounted on a star PCB. So we'll have a look to see if we can actually fit this inside the unit and still have it clamped down by the lens and still project, um, you know, kind of a reasonable pattern without losing too much light um, around the collimator. And then what we're going to do is rather than use this driver, um, Part of a bigger project is to create um, a lighting system for this room. Um, so what I'm going to do in a video tomorrow is use um, one of the DSPIC33, uh, the GS series of microcontrollers from Microchip. And we're going to design a constant current book regulator. So I'm going to work through the calculations on how to actually design a constant current regulator. And then we're going to write some code uh, and then we're going to drive the LED and be able to adjust the brightness of it. So that's in a video tomorrow. So if you enjoyed today's video and want to see more, uh, please subscribe, give a thumbs up and thanks for watching.